Okay, I guess it's time to start. Uh, so uh, welcome everyone to our uh, ITMP seminar. And today we have a talk by Mikhail Kropunov and he will speak about uh, modification of the radi uh, radiation definition in all dimensions. Uh, so please start. Mm. Uh, good evening. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, excellent. Uh, good evening. My name is Mikhail Kupanov, and the topic of, of my today talk is a modification of the radiation definition in other dimensions. Hmm. So, in the last 20 years, the interest has risen in the theory of uh, radiation in space time dimensions, other than a Four. And uh, this is due to the development of theories with extra dimensions, uh, beginning and the very active development of the gravitational wave astronomy and the multi messenger astronomy, uh, development of a holographic approach to the description of uh, quark gluon plasma, and also due to the field development of, of field theoretical models in the condensed metaphysics. So, uh, however, there was uh, mostly consideration of uh, even dimensional cases in literature due to the fundamental differences of uh, behavior between of behavior between radiation in even dimensions and odd dimensions. And uh, this fundamental difference in their behavior is uh, consists consists in a violation of Gilgen's principle in odd dimensions. Uh, physically, violation of Gilgen's principle in uh, odd dimensions uh, consists in uh, what follows. Uh, in uh, even dimensions, after the instantaneous flash of current, the signal from the source reaches the observer after the interval of time necessary for propagation with the speed of light. And uh, when a signal reaches observer, it's, uh, it ends and it ends instantly at the observation point. However, in uh, odd dimensions, it isn't so. In odd dimensions, uh, after the moment of time when signal reaches observation, observe, observer, after the interval of time required for propagation with the speed of light, the tail is observed endlessly. Mathematical reason for such behavior of uh, signals in odd dimensions consists in a structure of uh, retarded Green's functions of the massless wave equation in uh, odd dimensions. So see the uh, retarded Green function of the massless wave equation in n plus one dimensional space time. This is given by the following equation. And uh, the solutions of these equations are given by the two recurrent formulas, depending on the dimensionality of space time. The first uh, formula gives the recurrent uh, relations between retarded given functions in uh, even dimensions, for example, substituting uh, uh, new equal one, we obtain ordinary retarded green function in four dimensions. And the second uh, formula gives uh, the recurrent relation between retarded green functions in odd dimensions. And uh, from here, we can see that in odd dimensions, retarded fields, first of all, propagate in space with all velocities lower than the speed of light, depend on the source, source's history of motion, and also diverge on the light cone. Because uh, on the light cone, the denominator of uh, green functions uh, is zero. Is, this is a very old problem known since the works of Adamar, Grant, and Gilbert, and also book of Ivanenko and Sokolov. Uh, 
but uh, important uh, point is that free field in all dimensions should propagate exactly with the speed of light uh, and uh, radiation which is far from the source is free field also should propagate with the speed of light this, this mismatch could be resolved by use of the rohrlich teitelboim approach to the radiation, which is based on the use of uh, covariant retarded quantities. Let us, let us consider a point like particle moving along, along a world line Z with velocity V and denote the coordinates of the observation point as x. Let's consider x as a top of the light cone in the past and denote the intersection point of our light cone with uh, particles world line, world line as z uh, uh, retarded or we will use notation tau hat for the moment of proper time corresponding to the uh, point of intersection of intersection of world line with the white cone. This uh, retarded proper time tau hat is determined by a simple equation. Further, all, all headed quantities will correspond to the retarded proper time. They'll, they will be calculated at this moment of proper time. So we can introduce uh, the following vectors. First of all, we introduce light-like vector R capital with head, which is directed from the point of world line corresponding to the retarded moment of time to the observation point X. The second vector is a space-like unit vector U which is orthogonal to the particle's velocity at the retarded moment of proper time. And the third vector is uh, also light-like vector C, which is, is the sum of uh, particles uh, velocity V plus uh, introduced before space-like unit vector U. This vector has, uh, has the following properties. Uh, the most important is that we can introduce Warren's invariant parameter rho hat, which is a scalar product of particle velocity and air capital uh, calculated at the retarded moment of proper time. And this parameter is measured along a light, light cone, which, is, uh, which connects uh, the observation point and the retarded point. We note this, that uh, this Warren's variant parameter is proportional to the spatial distance far from the charge or our particle. So Tatelboim applied uh, these definitions to the four-dimensional electrodynamics and uh, found what follows. He considered uh, the four-dimensional electrodynamic electrodynamics with a point-like source and uh, demonstrated that the retarded solution of the Maxwell's, Maxwell's equation could be presented as a sum of two terms. The first term uh, dependent on the velocity of charge and proportional to one over rho hat squared, uh, the, so the short range term of the retarded solution. And the second one is uh, accelera acceleration dependent and proportional to one over rho hat, which is a uh, long range term. Calculating uh, on this solution, the energy momentum tensor of the electromagnetic field, uh, data boom demonstrates that it can be represented as the sum of uh, three terms. The first one, the most short range term, which corresponds to the energy momentum 
of the column field. The second one is the mixed term, and the last one is the so called radiated term, which is proportional to the one over rho hat squared, and which is the most long range term here. So the table boom demonstrated this, that uh, this uh, the most long range range term has the following has the properties corresponding to the radiated part of energy momentum. The first one states that uh, radiated part of the energy momentum tensor is conserved separately from the other parts. The second one is that it is proportional to the direct product of two light-like vectors C had introduced previously. Uh, and uh, it's, it corresponds to the propagation in space with the speed of light of this part of the energy momentum. And uh, the, thir the third property is that uh, the radiated part gives the positive definite energy momentum flux for the distance sphere in four dimensional space time. So uh, we, can, we can apply all this technique to the arbitrary dimensional problem. And uh, the structure of the on shell energy momentum tensor here is as follows. We again can represent energy momentum tensor as, as a sum of three terms. The first one is a short range term corresponding to the analog of Coulomb field. The second uh, term mixed. Mm, it is more complicated in uh, arbitrary dimensions than uh, in four dimensions because uh, in case of uh, three dimensions, there is no mixed term. And uh, for the dimensions uh, more than four, it consists of uh, more than one terms. And uh, the first term, again, the long range term, radiated part of the energy momentum tensor, which also has the same properties as the radiated part of the energy momentum tensor in uh, four dimensional electrodynamics. It is separately conserved. It is proportional to the direct product of two light-like vectors would correspond to the propagation in space with the speed of light. And also it, give, it gives positive definite energy momentum flux for the distance sphere. So the same structure of the on-shell energy momentum tensor holds also in the scour theory with the difference that uh, in scour theory, we calculate at the beginning the most uh, long range part of the scour field gradient. So, and uh, applying this technique, we can calculate uh, the radiation power as the flux of the radiated energy passing per uh, unit time for the distance sphere uh, in uh, two nu plus one dimensional space time. And uh, the radiation power is described by the following integral where R is the uh, radius of the distance sphere and N. N is the unit space-like vector in the direction of uh, observation. And also the omega capital is, a, is an angular element in uh, two, plus, two nu plus one dimensional space time. So, this radiated energy has uh, two important properties which uh, distinguish it from the even dimensional cases. The first one is that uh, our radiated energy also, again, propagates in space with the speed of light as in even dimensional theories despite the fact that the retarded field itself propagates in space with all velocities than the speed of light. And the second one is that it depends on the whole history, on the whole sources, history of motion preceding to the retarded moment of proper time. 
this dependence is uh, illustrated on the on this picture again we have observation point at the top of the light cone in past and uh, our radiated energy depends on the whole history of source preceding the retarded moment of proper time so let us consider the radiation of scour field interacting with a massive particle moving along the world line z in n plus one dimensional space time action of uh, such system is given by the following integral where m is a charges mass j is a particles scour charge and uh, omega capital is the area of the n minus one dimensional unit sphere uh, this action gives the following equation of motion of scour field with the scour current G described by the J, with the scour current J described by the following integral. The solution of uh, this equation of motion could be found by use of the retarded green function in n plus one dimensional space time. And to calculate the radiated energy momentum, we will use the canonical energy momentum tensor of the free massless scarrow field. Uh, further, we will consider case of uh, circular, circular motion of the charge with, con with constant velocity. And we will consider uh, two particular cases. The case of uh, non-relativistic motion of the charge and case of uh, ultra-relativistic motion of the charge by the circle. But the first, uh, sorry, can you clarify one? Yes. So here you are not going to consider uh, like electromagnetic waves. So you mimic a kind of uh, radiation by scalar fields, right? Uh, because normally by radiation uh, one understands uh, electromagnetic waves. That is, you need some kind of a mu potential on the net mu, nu. and here you will have like phi. Right, this phi will replace uh, the field which you associate with radiation. Yeah, yeah, it's a uh, most simple case, and it's like a toy model to oh. to train it's... to use uh, the machinery of Tatelbaum and Ro Rodlik. It's more simple case than electromagnetic radiation. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So uh, the first point uh, which I want also to discuss is the uh, regular, regularization of uh, Green's functions in odd dimensions. As uh, follows from the recurrent formula, these functions are singular on the light cone. And uh, we can regularize, regularize them uh, following the general theory of Gelfand and Shilov, or we can use the most simple way to, to regularize them. Uh, this way, in, this consists in, in what follows. We treat our green functions as product of uh, two separate functions. For example, in four, in four plus one dimensions, retarded green function is given by the by this formula and we treat it as a product of theta function and one over x squared or as product of delta function and one over x squared. Uh, and uh, to regularize this function, we will introduce a small uh, shifting parameter epsilon to the argument uh, of uh, delta function and theta function, and we will shift them from the light cone, which will uh, which will cancel which will cancel the singularity of these functions, uh, and then we will show that uh, introducing in such way regularizing parameters uh, terms consisting this parameter will be cancelled by each other and we will obtain the finite result. Uh, 
for the radiated field and radiated energy. So the, the very simple example of such procedure is uh, uh, calculation of the scalar field of static uh, five-dimensional charge. Again, the target given function in five dimensions is given by, the, by this formula. We assume that the charge is switched on for a, for a finite interval proper time from A to B, and uh, that the charge is at rest at the origin of coordinates. So then the charged world line is taken by the various, is given by the very simple equation, which uh, gives the following uh, scalar field. And here we substituted small regularizing parameter epsilon to the arguments of theta function and delta function. And uh, performing integration over the proper time, we find the following equation for our scalar field where we fixed the position in the space of the observation point and consider different intervals of time. And uh, as we can see here, before uh, the time required for propagation from the charge to the observation point uh, field vanishes. And uh, during the interval of time from a uh, moment of when our signal reaches observer with the speed of light to the moment when uh, the second signal, which uh, corresponds to the turned off charge, reaches the observer, then the scour field is represented by one term. And after the moment when uh, our charge is uh, switched off, we, can, we have uh, two terms for the scour field. And the idea is uh, if we take limit A to minus infinity and B to plus infinity, so we assume that uh, the entire, the eternal scour, ch scour charge at rest at the origin of coordinates, then we obtain for any uh, value of time the finite result, which uh, is uh, which which could be expected in this case it's uh, minus g over r squared in five dimensions so also to verify the obtained results we will calculate uh, the spectral distributions of the radiated energy and the uh, spectral distribution distribution of uh, radiated power because uh, in spectral representation uh, all calculations are insensitive to the dimensionality of space-time even it's even or odd we can uh, make all calculations in uh, the same manner so sorry can so, i ask one thing on the previous slide can you show the previous slide please yes uh, so what corresponds to a equals b if you put a equals b, I guess then it should be zero, right? The field phi should be zero. Ah, okay. Uh, so, so can you somehow like find what it corresponds to if you just uh, for one uh, moment like switch on and switch off? So then, like the last line is absent. I think then that uh, if we consider instant uh, flash mm -hmm. of uh, our charge, we will not have uh, integration over proper time. Our solution will be the retarded mean functions because uh, instant uh, flash of charge corresponds to the green function itself. So it's like a delta function in the right hand side of the equation of the scalar field. Mm. 
but this was like the original problem right so i was just thinking that this kind of integration over the line was a way to regularize this problem or something uh so, problem was the limit uh, pro the original problem was to regularize green greens functions for physical relations and, and uh, we used the introduction of regularizing parameter to the argument of uh, delta function and theta functions but uh, case of instant flash of charge uh, i think it, it is uh, i also think that you said uh, that uh, so the problem is that it doesn't work like in even dimensions because first the signal reaches the observer but then it doesn't die away immediately it still has some tail right yes yes can you see this tail from this formula for g retarded uh the tail uh, consists uh, is included into the term with theta function. Ah, okay. This so it can be non zero, right? Yes, yes. It doesn't die off instantly. It's uh, observed endless, endlessly when the first signal arrives at the observer. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, thank you. So Shall we proceed? And uh, yes, how to calculate the spectral distributions of the total radiated energy and uh, radiated power. So first of all, we consider the conservation law of the scalar field's energy momentum, which is given by the equation of motion of scalar field. And then we integrate it over our space-time, use the Gauss theorem here with omega having two uh, parts with uh, time like normal vectors. And uh, also, we use here the right hand side of the conservation uh, law. So, this term will give the full, the total radiated energy, energy momentum, and uh, we will use it for our calculations. So, substituting uh, Fourier transforms of the retarded scalar field, retarded scalar field, which is given by the following formulas, and uh, the Fourier transform of the current, we find the spectral angular distribution of the total radiated energy. First of all, we calculate the total radiated energy momentum here, and uh, performing integration over k zero, we can find the angular spectral, spectral distribution of the total radiated energy in n plus one dimensions where we also change the integration variables we turned from proper time to the coordinate time t and gamma here is a Lorentz factor of the moving charge and in case of the periodic motion of the charge we can uh, simplify this formula and uh, find the average over the period of motion uh, spectral angular distribution of the radiation power. This is uh, analog of the well-known short formula in four dimensional electrodynamics. Uh, it's just general generalizes this formula to the case of scalar field and uh, arbitrary dimensionality. Uh, we will use both these formulas to verify our calculations in a uh, wave zone. So, first of all, we consider the three dimensional theory and uh, retarded green function is given here by the following equation substituting it into the general solution of equation of motion we find the retarded scalar field where we introduced the uh, notation x capital as the difference of coordinates of uh, observation point and the world and the coordinates of world line of the charge 
So by analogy with uh, tatel boim calculations, we have to find uh, the most long range term of the gradient of the scour field. And after that, uh, calculate using this most uh, long range term of the gradient, the energy momentum tensor of the scour field. We will denote this uh, part of the gradient as phi mu radiated, and it is given by the following integral. Here, the first term in the integrand contain all the relevant physical information about uh, the field, while the second term just uh, subtract the singularity of the uh, from the first term on the top of the integration interval. We also use here the following notation that capital is the difference of the coordinates of a retarded point on the world line with coordinates of the whole world line. And also we used the fact that we can represent X capital in the following form, where we obtain the, our Lorentz invariant parameter rho, which is used as the expansion parameter. So inserting uh, our, the most long range part of the gradient of scalar field into the energy momentum tensor of the scalar field, we find the radiated part of the energy momentum, which is given by this equation. And we can see that it's, uh, it is a direct product of two light-like vectors, C hat, what correspond to the propagation of this part of energy momentum in space with the speed of light. And it's also multiplied by the integral amplitude A, which is given by this integral. Here we can uh, use again our regular, regularization method, which gives uh, the shift of uh, top integration point by small parameter epsilon. Again, here the first term consists of physical information about radiation, while the second term, which comes from this term in the gradient, just subtracts the singularity from the first term. So let's consider the case of uh, cir circular motion with constant velocity. Uh, the charge world line is given by this equation where gamma again is the Lorentz factor of charge, V is a linear velocity of the charge and uh, R0 is a radius of the circular trajectory and uh, omega zero is a frequency of orbital motion. Uh, far from the circle where are corresponding to the spatial distance from the origin of the coordinates and uh, also the, the center of the circular trajectory. Uh, much bigger than, than the radius of the trajectory. We, we find the expression for the retarded time, which connects uh, the retarded time, the, the retarded time and the time of the observation. And also we find uh, the simple equations for the rho hat and the C hat. Here we use the power coordinates of the observation point. So substituting all these found uh, quantities into the uh, integral amplitude of the radiated part of energy momentum tensor, we come to the following form of uh, integral amplitude. 
where we introduced new angular variable a uh, the most important is that zero of a at any time of uh, retarded uh, proper time at any moment of the retarded proper time corresponds to the uh, particles uh, direction of motion and we also introduce dimensionless uh, proper uh, integration variable s we can simplify this uh, integral amplitude in cases of uh, non-relativistic motion and in case of ultra relativistic motion uh, uh, let's consider non-relativistic case here we can uh, calculate our integral amplitude uh, expanding it to the Taylor uh, into the Taylor series by uh, powers of linear velocity of the charge and to the leading order in the charge velocity we obtain this expression for the uh, integral amplitude uh, at the first uh, sight, uh, it seems that uh, this is a divergent integral, but uh, integrating uh, by part by parts twice, we can explicitly demonstrate the convergence of this integral. We again introduce small regular, regularizing parameter epsilon at the bottom point of the integration and uh, find the following equation. Here, expanding uh, sine and, and cosine into the Taylor series over the small parameter epsilon, we find that uh, the first term uh, is cancelled with the second term, and uh, the third term vanishes. And we are left with uh, the finite integral, which, is, which can be represented as a linear combination of two convergent Fresnel integrals. As a result, calculating the integral amplitude of the radiate part of energy momentum tensor, uh, we can find the angular distribution of the radiation power, which is given by general formula here. So the most interesting in this angular distribution is uh, that uh, compare, comparing it with a four-dimensional case of electrodynamics, we see that uh, its maximum is not orthogonal to the direction of uh, charge acceleration, because uh, in four-dimensional case, for example, considering electrodynamics, we know that if uh, charges charge is moving along a circle trajectory, the maximum of its uh, radiation power angular distribution will correspond to the instant direction of motion and will be orthogonal to the acceleration of the charge. However, in our case, this uh, angular distribution is rotated by angle P over four. And uh, we can suppose that this is due to the contribution of the tail parts. And in the end of my talk, I will give another example, which uh, verify this uh, suggestion. And uh, integrating our angular distribution of the radiation power, we can find uh, the total radiation power of the non relativistic charge in uh, three dimensions. The second case is the case of uh, ultra relativistic motion of the charge. In the ultra relativistic uh, case, we can uh, note that the main contribution to the integral amplitude 
is given by the small interval of proper time of order one over gamma preceding the retarded moment of proper time which corresponds to the s equals zero and also the main contribution to this integral amplitude is given by the small interval of angular variable a of order one over gamma around the instant direction of motion at the retarded proper time. So using this, uh, we see that the radiated energy is beamed in the direction of the charge's motion and it, uh, its dependence of the of the, on the charge's history of motion is effectively localized around the retarded proper time. And we can uh, calculate the integrand of the amplitude to up to the leading order in the in uh, Warren's factor gamma. After that, uh, our integral amplitude takes the following form. Again, we know that uh, by first sight, the in, uh, this integral is convergent on the bottom top on the bottom point of the integration however we can again perform double integration by parts in this integral uh, introducing in the bottom point of integration the small shifting parameter epsilon and we find and we can show that this integral is uh, convergent and we again obtain the finite result for the radiation power. Uh, substituting uh, the found expression into the general formula for the radiation power, we came to the three-dimensional radiation power given by the following integral. Now this integral doesn't contain any physical parameters of the system and is just a numerical factor. We can uh, calculate this numerical factor on computer using numerical calculations. And uh, these calculations give the value for p over square root of three up to the four, di four digits up to the point. And uh, our radiation power takes the following form. Uh, to verify the obtained results, we return to the spectral angular distributions of the radiation power and the total radiated energy. In the non relativistic limit, we use the spectral angular distribution of the radiated power, which in a three dimensional case is given by the very simple formula. We note that the argument of the Bessel functions, which uh, are in our sum, uh, the argument of Bessel functions is the product of uh, linear velocity and uh, the summation parameter L. So we can approximate our Bessel functions uh, as Bessel functions of very small parameter and uh, use the, the given formula for this approximation. Substituting uh, these approximations into the spect uh, spectral angular distribution, we can uh, calculate it up to the leading order in charge in charges velocity again, and find the expression which coincides with, uh, with the expression obtained by the calculations in the wave zone. In, in ultra relativistic case, uh, we will start uh, with the spectral angular distribution of the total related energy, which in a three dimensional case is given by this formula, by this double integral. We can transform our 
integration variables in the following way. And uh, using the fact that in ultra relativistic case, our dependence on the charge history of motion is effectively localized around the retarded proper time. And the fact that our radiation is beamed into the direction of motion of the charge, we can uh, transform this integral into the spectral angular distribution of the radiation power. Again, using the fact uh, that our dependence on the history of motion is localized and the radiation is beamed, we can calculate the exponent up to the leading order in uh, Warren's factor of the charge, where it gives uh, the following equation for the spectral distribution of the radiated power. Here we again introduced a new angular variable a, which zero of which corresponds to the instant direction of motion of the charge. And using uh, the definition of uh, a function and uh, some tabular formulas for the integrals of a function, we arrive at the following equation for the radiation power in three dimensions. The remaining integral is uh, also given by the table of formula and we, obtain the, and we obtain the same result as in the calculations in the wave zone. Uh, the calculations in a uh, five-dimensional theory is uh, a bit cumbersome and uh, absolutely, absolutely analogous to those in three dimensions. So I will just uh, represent here the results of these calculations. Uh, the retarded green function in uh, five dimensions is given by the by this equation and uh, calculating the most long range term of the scour field gradient, we obtain the radiated part of the energy momentum tensor of the scour field, which uh, again is given as a direct product of two light like vectors, what correspond to the propagation in space with the speed of light. And uh, in this case, our integral amplitude is given by the sum of three, of three terms. The first one, again, consists, contain all the, all the relevant physical information about the radiation. And the second and the third term just uh, subtract the singularity from the first term on the top integration point. Calculating uh, the radiation power in non-relativistic limit and in ultra-relativistic limit, we obtain the following results. And uh, comparing uh, the formula for radiation power, for synchrotron radiation power in five dimensions with the result obtain in three dimensions, we can uh, suggest uh, the general formula for the radiation power of uh, scour synchrotron radiation in arbitrary dimensions. And uh, also if we can find the angular distribution of the radiation power of the non-relativistic charge in five dimensions. It is given by the following equation. And we again note that uh, its maximum, again rotated uh, on the angle P over four from the instant direction of motion of the charge. And also we can find that uh, the flux of the energy radiated into the three-dimensional plane 
in which our chat moves is about of uh, 85 percent of the total uh, radiation power so the most of energy is uh, radiated into the three plus one dimensional brain in our five dimensional space time and uh, finally to discuss uh, the influence and contribution of the tail parts of the retarded fields into the radiation we considered the most simple case of charge motion which is uh, which correspond to the finite interval of time when uh, there was uh, acceleration of the charge and uh, as example we can see the, the scoured charge moving along the x axis with the with the acceleration in the form of the gaussian function assuming that uh, our charge was at rest at uh, in the past we can find uh, the following equation for the charge world line and here we will consider only the non-relativistic limit of motion which corresponds here to the uh, following equation following condition on the parameters of the charge acceleration introducing the dimensional dimensionless variables we can numerically calculate the radiation power which uh, is represented here in the following form and uh, the results as follows the first uh, at the first we calculated the dependence of the radiation power on the observation time what corresponds to the dependence of the radiation power on the retarded moment of proper time which is the same in this case and we see that uh, our radiation despite the propagation at the speed of light has uh, uh, the tail in time and uh, we see that while the acceleration of the charge is uh, symmetrical in time our radiation power is not uh, while in uh, odd dimensions it uh, would be symmetric in time also and also we calculated the angular distribution of the of the radiation power and in this case yes excuse me uh, so you have a piece uh, to the left from the red line red dash line does it correspond to superluminal propagation or what, what is it like is it faster uh, than light or no no the I, I forgot to say the red dashed line corresponds to the maximum of the charge acceleration and in even dimensional case our radiation power would be symmetric with respect to this uh, maximum with respect to this moment of time because uh, the acceleration is symmetric with respect to this moment of time in even dimensions but in uh, odd dimensions we can see that uh, this is not the case we have uh, we don't have symmetric uh, radiation power and we can see the dying in time tail part of the radiation which is uh, presented here mm -hmm. okay thank you and also calculating uh, the angular distribution of the radiation we can see that uh, in this case its maximum 
coincides with the direction of motion of the charge, which is uh, not the case in even, for example, in four dimensional electrodynamics, this distribution uh, would be rotated uh, on the angle uh, P over two and uh, spectral and the maximum of uh, angular distribution would be orthogonal to the direction of motion and the direction direction of the acceleration of the charge. But uh, taking into account the presence of the tail part of radiation, we can assume that uh, this form of uh, angular distribution in case of circular motion is formed by the interference of the tail parts of, radi of uh, radiation coming from each point of the circular trajectory of the scalar charge. And uh, so sorry, think, like uh, we didn't hear you for a moment. At least me, views. I'm sorry. What? Uh, so, sorry, you you just uh, was frozen for a moment, so you didn't ask like anything. You're just. Oh, I'm sorry. So uh, I think this is all what I want. Ah, this is so, it. Okay. To me. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank, thank you. you for your uh, so, are there any questions? Okay, I, I wanted to ask one thing. So, from your title, so it says like modification of the radiation definition. So it sounds like there was a definition and you modified it, right? So, or I'm missing something. So I didn't see in your talk where you have had some old definition you replace it with new, new definition. So the old definition of radiation in even dimensions was based on the use of uh, longer uh, range uh, parts of the retarded fields. But in uh, Rolich Teitelboim approach, it's more using uh, the most long range part of the energy momentum tensor. And uh, this is the basic idea in this approach. Um. And also the expansion parameter, uh, which in uh, ordinary four dimensional electrodynamics is a special distance. In a Rorich Teitelbaum approach, the expansion parameter is a Warren's invariant parameter, rho measured along the white cone. And this is the second basic idea of this definition of radiation. Oh, okay, I see. Okay, can you say that you can uh, like diagnose presence or absence of extra dimensions by presence or absence of tails? Uh, yes, yes, it's uh, it is uh, idea for my for my uh, further research to to calculate the, for example, gravitational radiation because in uh, in the most of modern theories, with extra dimensions, gravity is, a, is the only interaction which propagates through the extra dimensions. And uh, uh, it can give us information about the existence of large extra dimensions by presence of the tail parts in this uh, gravitational radiation. But uh, uh, these tail spots could be seen only if, at the beginning stages of, uh, for example, coalescence of binary systems, because uh, when a uh, system starts to move uh, relativ in relativistically and uh, 
ultra relativistically all the all tails are localized to the retarded moment of proper time and there is no tails in ultra relativistic cases mm -hmm. and uh, i don't know can you i don't know whether it's useful or not to consider like a limit of small mass to consider first a massive case and then consider a limit of uh, mass to zero i mean like uh, as a regularization parameter or like for example to see qualitative difference can you see okay the question is like this can you see the qualitative difference between massive uh, uh green uh, retarded green functions in different dimensions I think that uh, in mass, in massive case, I think that uh, there is no so crucial distance uh, difference in Green's functions because uh, in massless case, the free field, uh, massive. Massless field should have to propagate with the speed of light, free field. But uh, massive field could propagate with all velocities or within the speed of light. And uh, mm -hmm. the, the... Well, okay, I see. I don't think that there would, will be so crucial distance as in a uh, massless case. Did I answer the, the, your question? Yeah, okay, so yeah, so in, it seems that like in the limit when m goes to zero, yeah, you will see like this difference like sharper and sharper at some point. Can you hear me? So we have uh, other questions. Hello? Hello? Is there anyone who uh, wants to ask a question? I don't hear you. No, I'm sorry. Okay, so can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? 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 Can you hear me? Hmm. Now we have some sound issues. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, now I can hear. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, I uh, I don't know. I had the impression that there was a question, but I don't don't see it again. So I just wanted to ask one last thing. So you know, in QFT, it's often people do dimensional regularization and stuff like that. So they consider dimensions which are not integer. Does it make sense uh, to do this analysis in uh, like non-integer dimension? Mm. No, I think it's uh, well, a classical problem of radiation here, and uh, I don't know what can make sense for considering radiation in non-integer dimensions. Mm. Okay. Okay, well, thanks. <clears throat> uh, so, okay, it seems that we don't have any other questions, right? So, let's then thank uh, the speaker uh, again. So, thank you. And uh, thank you. see you next time. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye.